Hello, and welcome to this week's Campfire video series. My name is Thomas, and I'm a historic interpreter for the Lewis and Clark Interpretive Center in Fort Mandan. This week's video is about Knife River Flint. Now, Knife River Flint is the most famous type of flint in North Dakota, and despite the name, it's not just found by the Knife River. But before we get into that, we should talk about how Knife River Flint is formed. Flint is a sedimentary stone that ranges in color from light beige to dark gray with a glassy or waxy appearance. Now, Flint is usually found in what's called a nodule, which is basically a clump of stone found within other stone. Now, Flint is most often found near water sources, though this is not exclusively the case. Flint is a type of stone called a chert, and it often breaks in what's called a conchoidal fracture, which means that it breaks with a rounded curve on its edge. Flint is formed by silicates replacing chalk piece by piece. It is found in layers, but the reason why this is is not fully understood. Now, the age of flint is generally agreed to be between the Miocene Epoch and the Eocene Epoch. The Miocene lasted from about 23 million to 5 million years ago. The Eocene lasted from 56 million to 33 million years ago. Now, for Knife River Flint, we can put an upper bound on the age of it at 40 million years. Um, but beyond that, it is tricky because Knife River Flint has never actually been found in place. Humans have been using flint and other silica-rich surface stones for around 13,000 years. The conchoidal fractures that flint makes are excellent for making sharp edges for stone tools. In areas of high flint deposits, you can see shallow pits that were used by Paleo Indians to collect flint. And this practice continued well into written history. Knife River Flint was particularly harvested by the Mandan in the Hidatsa and nomadic tribes that traveled through North Dakota. They would use Knife River Flint to make knives, arrowheads, and other tools. They also traded the flint along a vast trade network all across North America. Knife River Flint was considered some of the best quality flint in the world. Uh, even today, it is still prized by flint knappers. Metal tools, when they arrived through fur traders, decreased demand, but they never fully extinguished the demand for flint. European colonists and their descendants still had need for the use of flint. Flint and steel were the primary method of fire creation up until the early 1800s. And the act of striking flint and steel together were how flintlock weaponry fired. Flintlock weaponry would not be supplanted until the percussion cap in the 1820s. Now flint and steel itself works by striking the two pieces together. And what's actually happening here is the flint is so sharp that it is capable of striking tiny bits of steel off of your piece of steel. Those tiny slivers of steel uh, gain enough friction to heat up and become sparks. Those sparks then land on some tinder, which hopefully ignites and you can build up your fire from there. Flint is still used for a variety of purposes. Flint napping is the practice of working and shaping flint. Flint nappers today still highly prize Knife River Flint for its fine quality. This has led to traditional deposits of flint being picked clean, making the stone difficult to find. Please remember to leave all natural and historic sites as you find them. Thank you for watching this video of the Campfire series brought to you by the North Dakota Parks and Recreation Department. We hope you enjoyed this video and let us know if you have any questions. You can also view Knife River Flint in the display case at the Lewis and Clark Interpretive Center. So come visit us this summer. Goodbye. Hey, thanks for joining us. 
Make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel to catch the Campfire series all summer long, brought to you from North Dakota State Parks and Recreation. See you next time.